The iPhone 14 Pro Max is the underground start of the Apple Far Out event. It might not be the most searched for, but it certainly is one of the most impressive devices that Apple launched. While very similar to the iPhone 13 Pro Max that launched last year, there are some significant upgrades in the camera, screen tech, notch, and functionality departments that make this the phone that you should be checking out this year, if you can afford it. Our team just got back from the Apple launch event where they got their hands all over these devices to find out whether they're likely to be worth your excitement and eventually your hard earned cash. The iPhone 14 Pro Max will start at $1,099, which is about $100 less than we expected. There's no slowdown on when you'll be able to get a hold of the device though. You can pre-order it right now and get your hands on the iPhone 14 Pro Max from September 16th. The iPhone 14 Pro Max isn't going to differ significantly in design over the 13 Pro Max. However, if you're looking for something that's gonna fit that expensive case you bought for your 13 Pro Max, you're out of luck. While the dimensions are pretty much the same, the camera bump at the rear is much larger. Holding the new Pro Max is a really familiar feeling to the 12 and 13 Pro Max. Those sharper squared off edges are exactly where your fingers expect them to be. And most people's thumbs will still need to perform the normal gymnastics to reach across that giant screen. The physical mute switch remains and there's no USB-C connector at the bottom as was heavily rumored. Apple are clinging onto that lightning port for at least one more year and that will no doubt be a relief to many of you who are expecting to have to buy new chargers and accessories this year. The stainless steel band around that outside edge is still just as much of a fingerprint magnet as it's always been. But this time, there's no SIM tray below the volume button. This is a change that got mumbles of unhappiness in the room when it was shown off. So I'm curious, is this a deal breaker for you? Are you happy to go SIM free right now? Or is this a step too soon from Apple? Whatever you think, you have to admit, it's awfully courageous of them. The main change in terms of design isn't in the body though. The notch is finally dead, kind of. It's been replaced by like a long pill thing, but it's not a long pill thing. It, it moves and it changes and it shows you notifications and it adapts. Apple are calling it the Dynamic Island, which got a laugh when it was announced in the room, but will probably quickly go into standard Apple vernacular in no time at all. You could start music and have the album art in the top, have a timer sit next to the notch, or just tap it to get your music playing again. It's a genuinely cool feature, and Apple has sprung somewhat of a surprise on us with it, turning what would be an eyesore into something that's really helpful when navigating around your phone. It takes some getting used to if you've been fine with the notch for years, or if you're coming from an Android device that just had a hole punch camera, but when you've got it in your hand and you see it dynamically moving, it makes more sense. We suspect that in a few days of use, you'll stop seeing the holes altogether, but in our early testing of watching a movie with it, it seemed rather prevalent, thanks to the fact that the screen wrapped around it, rather than the notch, which was always kind of left off to the side. Apple has also invented some new screen tech for the iPhone 14 Pro, and it's called an always-on display. I'm obviously kidding, these have been around for years now, but have finally made their way onto Apple's latest devices. It looks nice, and is something that iPhone users have been crying out for for many years. Needing to tap or lift the phone in order to see what time it is can be a hassle, and it can also waste your battery by waking up the phone. And so if you use your phone as a watch or a clock, it could save you some battery in the long run, although we'll need to do more testing to confirm this. This new feature has been enabled by the fact that the OLED display tech used in the new phone now has the same capabilities of the Apple Watch, where it can slow down to just one refresh per second. The feature is more rich than we'd expected with widgets, wallpapers, and clock all still showing when the phone is locked and off. You'll need to do some playing around with it to decide whether or not you want to show all of the widgets or your wallpaper, or just show the clock on its own. If you're still rocking an iPhone 11 series phone and have never used an iPhone with an OLED screen, you'll be hugely impressed with the clarity, color reproduction, fluidity, and general expanse you get with the 6.7 inch display. However, if you're upgrading from a 12 or 13 Pro Max, notch aside, we didn't spot too much of a difference. The iPhone 14 Pro Max camera upgrade is mostly centered around one element, the 48 megapixel sensor. This enhanced tech means that you can have a wider gamut of photography styles, take high-res pictures, and get improved low-light capabilities. The combination of the more pixels can manifest itself in a number of ways. 
but one of the most impressive will likely be the ability to combine the 48 megapixels into one 12 megapixel image, smooshing together the pixels for higher res low light imagery. Apple is claiming it's twice as good in low light in its testing. We'll need more time and a better environment to put it to the test, but the onboard processing does seem smart. In our early testing, the camera is smart and snappy, with images focusing in an instant, and the switch between video and photography being rather swift indeed. There's no reason to expect that this wouldn't be the case given the improved internals, but it's nice to be able to spot this in our early hands-on time. At full resolution and zoomed in, there's a real clarity to images that Apple has likely achieved by putting together the enhanced pixels and computational photography from the new A16 chipset. The overall effect is strong, and now there's also a two times zoom, where the phone crops in on the 48 megapixel sensor to give you a middle ground between the one times and three times zoom lenses. The sensor is Apple's largest that it's ever placed in a phone, and the 48 megapixel snapper's 1.9 micron size is gonna let in a lot of light. The one thing that you will notice when using the new iPhone 14 Pro Max, at least initially, is the larger protrusion of the camera bump on the rear. Sony is rumored to have been the ones that made the sensor, and it will allow for the larger pixels to grab all that lovely light and make for a more pleasing image. Yes, it does make the phone even thicker at the back, but in our opinion, that's worth it for the better snaps. There's also a new action mode that will allow you to have smoother videos when you run. Another one that's going to need a good test to monitor, but initially it does look a lot smoother thanks to the onboard smarts of the 14 Pro Max. We can't easily test the battery life without running it through our usual suite of tests. Right now, there's no way to know if it's gonna hold up as expected or even match the iPhone 13 Pro Max. What was clear was that the jump from the 12 Pro to the 13 Pro was significant. And if the claims of enhanced battery efficiency, thanks to that A16 chip are true, that means the 14 Pro Max will be able to last even longer with its better new low power modes. One of the things that might make a difference here is the amount of information on that always on display. It's up to you whether you just show the time or you have your full wallpaper and widgets in that dull mode they showed off that could all affect the overall longevity of the power pack. But rumors say that there is a larger cell inside and the increased thickness of the 14 Pro Max over the previous generation certainly suggests that that is true. So hopefully you will find that you'll be able to go even longer in between charges. The notch changes aside, the biggest talking points in our eyes is the speed at which the iPhone 14 Pro Max can run. It's obvious that Apple would want to make sure that the Pro models are the most powerful in the world if only to justify that extra cost. But it's clear that this is a step upwards. Again, it's hard to truly understand how powerful this phone is without running our benchmarking tests, and more importantly, trying it in real life. But we can't see many applications that would truly tax its inner power. Apple made a big deal on stage about the enhanced power of the iPhone 14 Pro range. And in the hand, it's hard to believe that many people would be able to slow this phone down. The rumors of more powerful RAM seem to bear out. With a strong ability to open and close apps, take photos, and undertake heavy tasks with ease. What was particularly clear was that every heavy app that we opened, whether it was shooting 4K video at 60 frames per second, or quickly putting something together in GarageBand, it was all very quick to save and open. A very good sign indeed. The iPhone 14 Pro Max is the biggest, boldest, and most impressive phone in Apple's new iPhone lineup. And all of that comes with a higher price tag, obviously. The new Dynamic Island is a genuinely cool change and something that we think users will like and get used to very quickly. Although that pill-shaped cutout does feel like it's in the way of some apps. The camera enhancements are par for the course with the iPhone Pro Max range, but it certainly is possible that we might be wowed by the low light performance as well as the new action mode. In the hand, it certainly doesn't feel that different to phones that have gone before it. But that doesn't seem to have been a problem for Apple fans in the years gone by. It all doesn't stop us thinking that the iPhone 15 needs to be a big leap forward to keep the iPhone momentum going. But let me know what you think of Apple's latest devices down in the comments below. Have Apple done enough this year to pique your interest, or is it all just a bit of a letdown? Remember to subscribe to Tech Radar here on YouTube while you're at it, and you won't miss our full video reviews that will hopefully be coming very soon indeed. I'll see you on the next one.